Welcome everyone to episode 200 and chilly 44 of Aussie Tech As It is a cold night in Australia, up and down the east, eastern seaboard as it were, because it is freezing. I don't know about you guys, um, I know there's a couple of listeners out there, especially Milo down in, where is he, south of Sydney somewhere, I forgot where, he, where you were Milo, but I know you must be cold, and I think Canberra's cold, everywhere's cold. But anyway, we're pushing on. I need little slippers on. I've got my socks and I need my slippers. All right, so how are we all going? It's uh, episode 244, Aussie Tech Eds. Will, you're around? You're, you're cold up there as well? Yeah, we got down 2.1 at uh, about 5 o'clock this morning. To 2.1 or 0.1? 0. 0.1. Yeah, that's cold. <laughs> uh, 15 minutes west at Imswich, they had iced windscreens and stuff. Wow. But you look like you've got a T-shirt on now. You got a heater on? I just don't feel the cold. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm cold. I've got me, got me jacket on. I've got me shirt, me, me uh, tracky pants on and socks. And even my feet are still cold. I sort of put my slippers on, as I said. All right. So, yeah, yes. Um, so, er- Eric's, er- Eric is on tonight. He's going to come and join us later on in the show. And uh, so, so we'll get started, eh? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, call in if you want. If you're watching us live dot the secret if you're in the lounge tonight just call in aussie techhead on the skype you can contact glenn or will or eric at aussie techheads.com.au and what else will that's about it yeah that's, that's, about that's it. yeah follow me on twitter at aussie techheads follow will on twitter at mr tomkinson and uh you can follow eric at on twitter at eric franco all right empire avenue shares they're going okay will your, yours have tanked your, you've lost interest I have no idea. No, I, I check it every day, but I don't I tell you. The, have the money to buy any more shares in anything to make the buy price any better. So yeah, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, it's uh, it gets a bit like that. I know how it was. I don't know what happened to me, but all of a sudden, someone invested like bought five hundred of my shares, and I've never looked back. Oh, they they yeah. like I had I, I looked in it one day, and it was like seventy five grand. I went yeah yeah yeah. So that's good. All right, what else is happening? Um, not too much, not too much. All right, let's start off. So let's start off with a story from you, Will, or, or tell us what's been happening or give us a story. Well, I, um, in terms of what's been happening, I had a uh, requ- Well, I managed to get a hold of somebody. To, I'm doing an interview with in the next couple of weeks for a sort of green tech um just a, you know, part of a TBT special. Um, he does designed his own, you know, solar hot water systems and, and whatever. Nice, nice. And I had in conundrum. Um, I just suddenly he doesn't have a computer just because he can't use one. Um, and so the only real way we can do it was for him to come to my studio. And that made me realise that I actually have. Um, Don't have a no, studio. Uh, <laughs> Well, that, but I've got no way of incorporating a second um, person into my studio because right. it's just designed for me. So that's made me do a complete uh, a rethink and re- redesign. But on the upside, I went to the local music shop. Um, they had a sale on and they had these mics. They're just a, what are they? TMS, JTS something rather. Oh, TM99. Yeah. Um, and they're normally eighty something dollars, and they had them on sale for twenty bucks. Nice. Are they XLRs or what's what's the plug on them? They're actually well, they're an XLR, but they're a, they're not a oh yeah. Compre- so they will run off uh, a normal mic input. Yeah um, right. So how are you going to feed that into the? Hey, it worked. <laughs> I did have it turned on. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound too bad either. I'll move, move away from my other microphone, and I haven't set this up. I literally just plugged it in and turned it on. I haven't adjusted the volume or anything. Yes, yeah, so that sounds good. That's good. Uh, yeah. Well, so when when can we expect that? That's it. That's working progress over the next weeks, coming weeks. Um, with any luck, yeah. Probably by the end of next week, I'll have the studio <coughs> sorted out in such a way that um, I can incorporate a second person. So. And so, what does he what does he do through the winter months when there's hardly any sunshine? Um, well, if you've got your system designed properly, you compensate for that. So, I know I went out and had a look at my solar, 
uh, panel the other day, and at the at the hottest part of the day, yeah, its efficiency its efficiency was only seventy five percent. So um, I guess that's yeah, it's just it's just a weak sun, I guess, at the moment, as we can tell, as we can tell in our bones. But uh, let's uh, let's start moving on with some stories for the week. Cause it has been like a not as probably bad as last week. I didn't not enough stories last week. I didn't have a happy week last week with new stories. But this week it's been a little bit better. <laughs> it's been a little bit better. Uh, new Firefox is out. Firefox five, which is just seems really uh, fast, doesn't it? Like Firefox four point something was only just out the other week, three months ago. Apparently, apparently they they started to roll them out three every three months. So at this rate, they'll be up to Firefox 100 before you know it. But Firefox, yeah, they, um, apparently they're, they're doing what Chrome is now with all their smaller updates too. They're just automatically pushing them through. Mm. So it is an auto update, although sometimes it might not on your machine. Like one of my machines, it wouldn't auto update, but the other machine did. No idea why. But so anyway, I just went through and just downloaded it. All good. All good. So far, so good. Uh, so the latest version of Firefox includes more than 1,000 improvements, can you believe? 1,000. I'm not going to list them all. I couldn't even find the list, to be quite honest. Uh, and performance enhancements that make it easier to discover and use all of the innovative features in Firefox. This release adds support. This is from the uh, Firefox blog. This release adds support for more modern web technologies that make it easier for developers to build uh, amazing Firefox add-ons and apps, and all that sort of stuff. Firefox for Windows, uh, Mac and Linux now supports CSS animation standard to enable developers to build more amazing web applications and websites. Do not track privacy features being made easy to access. Well, I'm glad of that. And background hog resources less. Now, background hog tabs, whatever that means. Oh, yes, okay. So the more tabs you have open, apparently yeah, they are really uh, into CPU intensive, so that's going to be less lessened. So that's good. That's good. So you'd upgrade. I, I did see on the site it goes Firefox 5, something like eight times faster than Firefox 3. <laughs> I'm going, right. Why, not, why wouldn't they compare it to Firefox 4? Like, <laughs> you might as well say it's just eight to, it's, it's a thousand times faster than Firefox 1. Like it's got, I don't think it's got any relevance. They should have compared it to the previous version. But, uh, but that's how they go. That's how it goes. You've updated, Will. Oh, well, I haven't run Firefox. Um, the only system I actually use it on is um, my laptop in the, in the oh, it's sort of my little netbook thing, Asus EPC. It runs my Skype phones and it runs our media center. Right. Well, that's the only computer I have it on. So it probably has updated, but I sort of haven't really noticed. Um, although I was almost tempted to today when I heard about it. Um, I was actually, or well, yesterday, um, I was browsing a Queensland government website. I went to a form submission and it said the only, sorry, your browser is not compatible. I was using Chrome. Right. It said only IE4 or Firefox 3 or Netscape is supported. Jeez. Mm, <laughs> that, that, that sort of limits the use, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and so I loaded up. Internet Explorer 8 or whatever the, the new one is. Yeah. And no, it wouldn't work. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. hard. I think, I just, like, yeah, the, the government seems to be a bit slow in the uptake of all the new browser technologies and maybe rightly so, you know, they've got to be security conscious. But, but geez, it, it makes it hard. And especially if you're trying to do some business with them and you can't even get the, you know, get the thing going. <laughs> Because Netscape, you need Netscape three or something. Jeez, what's going on there? It's uh, um it, oh, I was on a website the other day. Can't think what it was. It was something I was playing around with, and it was uh, one of the a geek, you know, a, a site that should know better. Yeah, and it had a um, this page is currently under development. They had the little animated digging dude, the little email box with the letter that slid in and they had this site supports Netscape Navigator Gold. Hmm, <laughs> jeez. <laughs> oh, wouldn't be... What, what about if you come across a site, this site supports the AOL browser. <laughs> browser. <laughs> <laughs> Is that still... You can't get that no more, can you, surely? No, they, that, gave up on the, they gave up on their walled garden. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
That was the AI of Braille. Where I was like, what was the other one before? Um, I can't remember what it was called now. Sapphire or something years ago. Yeah, look, I had a, I dabbled. Thing. I dipped <laughs> me toes into that AOL thing. Jeez, that was a while ago. Um, but here's, here's, a, here's another story here I've got. I've got. Of course, I've got a few stories. Uh, the Foxtel T-Box service is going to be rolled out on Monday to T-Box customers on cable broadband through a software update. It's also going to be activated later this year for ADSL2 customers. So that's uh, good. <laughs> the basic starter Foxtel T-Box package contains 11 channels and will cost $19.50 a month. Why wouldn't you just go and get Foxtel or something? Sport, entertainment, no. showtime, 10 to $15 a month extra. No contracts. Uh, fetch TV plans to add YouTube, YouTube's new lean back video stream as an integrated service to gradually expand its ethnic TV coverage. Telstra says its T-Box rollout has been overwhelmingly successful. 120,000, apparently. 120,000 tea boxes are in the homes in the homes in ja- as of January this year. So that, that's quite a few, isn't it? Um, the Foxtel tea box will be rolled out on Monday, as I said. Yeah. Oh, that's the sentence again. There you go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So well, I don't know. I don't know. Like why? Why? I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like. I haven't even seen. I haven't seen the tea box to be honest. Look, I, I did watch the tea box when I was in a Telstra store, and I, t- I wasn't happy. Hey, eh? I, I thought it was blurry. I thought it was a, it was bad definition. Um, I, I just didn't like it at all. So unless they've improved on it since I saw it, I only saw it about a year ago, I guess. But uh, but why not just if you want pay TV, why wouldn't you just go and get Foxtel? Obviously, you got you can get Foxtel if you're in a cabled area because you can get the you got cable broadband. So well, you can still get Foxtel. See, Foxtel's not. Cable satellite now, Foxtel's um, CBD, because we can't. We're on we're on satellite, but we're still on Foxtel. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. But if you were to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably just get Foxtel, wouldn't you? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? I want someone to ring in. Can someone ring in and tell me what if they got a T box and why they're so good? Well, we have Foxtel. But we've only got the basic pack. Um, so that's about and 40. Yeah. And I mean, we don't even have it. It's one of the other housemates got it on. And there's, you know, like three channels that are worth watching. So I'd much prefer to have the option just to pay for a channel as I want it. But you can't pay for a channel as you want it, can you? No, not with Foxtel. With um, some of the, like the Telstra um, on, on my phone, I can watch oh, okay. Foxtel on my phone. And I can pay per channel, so I can actually watch something I want to watch. Mm. Uh, and I, I don't mind paying, you know, ten bucks a month to watch that channel. If I'm only going to watch four or five channels anyway, it's not going to cost me any different, and mm. I'm going to actually have the ones I want to watch. Now, with your Android phone, you still got the Android? Yep, my uh, Desire. Can you right. can you throw the picture up to a TV in any shape or form? Um, yes, it's got HDMI output. Nice. So you could pay your little ten dollars for your single channel, and then just throw it to your TV. I mean, I don't know what the resolution would be like <laughs> on a big screen, um, but I mean, the resolution of the phone's sufficient because it does, you know, seven twenty p. But I don't know about the actual app. Um, yeah, right. Because well, apparently the you know the iPad's supposed to throw it up to the TV pretty good. So again, it depends on the. The resolution of the content you're starting with. Oh yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, so I don't know. The, the jury's out for me on that, all that sort of stuff. I, I'm just sticking with the Windows Media Center, integrated with Boxy, and uh, I'm happy, happy camper. I've got the YouTube, I've got Leo, I've got uh, whatever, whatever's there, you know, whatever's there. iView, all that sort of, all the goodness, all the good stuff. Uh, which brings me to another story. There's a bit of a Debate and a bit of a bit of a jostle over this media streams. They're, they're sparking privacy rows over privacy privacy rows over copyright issues. So it's all about the you know you know when you want to watch something in the US, you go through a VPN, and uh, that's the one. Will that's the exact same. That's the out of the Australian. Well, look, that's the one. Yeah, so you know how you, you can't watch it over here on the internet because you're region restricted. 
well, apparently the they're getting all up in arms about people tunneling through virtual private network networks to allow them to watch that content. Now, apparently, Hulu and Boxy and Netflix they're all in the they're all in the crosshairs. These aggregators prohibit their content being streamed to Aussie homes because the copyright agreements with major producers such as 20th, 20th Century Fox, Universal Studios and Paramount allow distribution only in the US and sometimes in Canada. The University of New South Wales copyright expert Kathy Bowery believes promoting devices that help Australian users access movies and TV shows available only to US subscribers might be unlawful. What a, what a stick in the mud. The person who offers the VPN is possibly liable... It's also a breach of copyright to encourage people to infringe and provide a means by which they can infringe, she went on to say. The reason why the content... Now, this is a, uh, a, a quote now from the a spokesman from a place called vpnsecure.me. The reason why the content is geographically restricted in these nations is due to a, agreements be de- between companies like Hulu and Netflix and the media industry. There's no binding government law. The reason why the content is... Just that sentence again. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm pasting twice tonight. Uh, I, I must have had a few many to drink, you know. I'm seeing double. But, but I don't know. What do you reckon? Do you reckon it's illegal? Do you reckon it should be? Well, you can't. What are they going to do? Ban VPNs? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, 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 think, I, I just think they just need to uh, just get a grip quite honestly, and just look at, okay, well, okay, so, so in, in, their, in their perfect world, the studio's perfect world, they would ban VPNs, but then, but that, but you know, like people are trying to pay for this content, they're trying to pay for it through, exactly. through Netflix, Hulu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, they, they're paying for it. Now, yeah. like, ban the VPNs, ban that way of getting it, so then they'll just go and download it for free. So Anyway. Yes, that's <laughs> right, anyway. So it seems to me well, that, 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 that it's, it's that versus free. Why are they fighting it? Yeah, well, what I found funny was that I dug a bit deeper into that and there's another story which I can't um, pull up because I've got the bookmark it. But it said that um, they interviewed 500 people, I think it was. It was a pretty big study. <laughs> um, and something like 98% of the people would happily pay Netflix or whoever to have the subscription model. But because they can't, they mm. get it any way they can. And they don't see it as piracy because it would only constitute piracy if you can purchase a product and then illegally distribute it. If you can't purchase a product in the first place, it's not piracy. Right. So where where's that come from? It may be copyright infringement, but it's oh, not okay. piracy. Right, right. Yeah, look, I don't know. I think that they've got to start – these people, these, the studios and all that, they've got to, they, obviously they've got to start thinking it's not just the US market and whatever. It's the global market, surely. Surely, like, you know, stuff can whip around the world at the, at the blink of an eye even faster. It's like we're in a global market these days. It's not just – it's not Australian content or American content. And, you know, premieres here and premieres there. I think the TV stations are, you know, starting to get it, you know, with all the fast tracking and all that sort of stuff, which is good. And even to a certain extent, even Foxtel, you know, they few channels on Foxtel fast track stuff. And uh, so, yeah, I I just, you know, they just want to ruin everything, don't they? They want to ruin everything. It goes hand in hand with, um, there's this other story I have about, uh, where is it? About what Apple's doing. Apple has implemented, well, there's a patent out um, which, as far as I can tell, means it's already in the software. They're working on technology that disables a person's phone camera when you're at a live event. So Mm. if you're at a um, concert or or something like that, uh, infrared scanner spins around the room and if it detects your camera on your iPhone because it has a um, infrared sensor, infrared sensor in the iPhone. Mm. Um, if it detects that, it automatically shuts your camera down, so you can't record any live part of the concert. But <laughs> the only downside to that is what happens if you're at, let's say, you're at a Wiggles concert and this thing's implemented, and you want to record your kids' reaction. Yeah, you can't. 
So <laughs> they're basically saying what they're doing now is they're making it so that the people now at the venue can, if you've got a ticket for the venue, somebody is officially recording it and then you're allowed to, well, they'll sell you the content from their version of the live recording. So yes, yes. basically it's discovered another way of making money. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Do you reckon they – so what, they're working on the technology to, to freeze the, the camera – the phone cameras or have they already if, got it? Well, yes. If, if the camera is activated – no, they've already got it according to the patent. Um, right. If the camera activates, it just it shuts the camera down. Yeah, okay, right. Um, yeah, so, yeah, geez, it's, <laughs> it's hard work, isn't it? It's hard. What if you, like, you know, why can't you go to a concert and, like, it's going to be the crappiest quality. And if you was a true fair dinkum, you know, diehard fan, you'd want the proper, the proper one anyway. You'd want the yeah, you'd, you'd want right. the proper I mean, video. You want the professionally pre- a, a sort of a, a keepsake to say that you were there. You know, it's got hmm. nothing to do with pirates. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Basically, what it comes down to is these companies can't figure out a way to make any more money legally, so they're going to change the law. Yeah, because I just oh, another bee in my bonnet is uh, look. It's just totally off, off subject, <laughs> but um, like because my my two go swimming. Right, and so I wanted to film them, you know, swimming in their swimming lessons and stuff. So I brought the camera out, hooked her in, you know, started going. It was only a handy cam, no big bloody tripod or nothing and, and lighting or anything. And, oh, yeah, five minutes into it, I got told to put it away. I'm not allowed to yeah. film. I'm thinking, why not? So just for, for some crazy rule, because they think I might be a pervert or, you know, or someone else is a pervert, you know, trying to film little kitties in the pool. So what? So I'm going to miss out on my kids' my kids' childhood learning to swim. Oh, I reckon that's that's. I just had a beam up on it. I had to get it out there. Sorry, you're not allowed to do. Um, so now, you're not allowed to do at restaurants. You, if you're having a birthday party, you can't film in a restaurant. You can't film sporting events. You can't film anything. You're not allowed to. You're not even allowed to. If you're at the beach, you're not even allowed to film your kids or anyone else at the beach. Mm, that's rubbish, isn't it? But well, the beach would have to be different, wouldn't it? That'd be a public place. You wouldn't. It doesn't be... mean you're allowed to do it. <laughs> yeah, I oh, know. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. Like, I mean, like the people that are going to go and do crazy things, looking at pictures. Well, you know, they're going to do crazy things anyway until they till they're busted. So um, that that know. brings up this other story about how basically, as of next month our internet's going to be censored whether we want it to or not. Um, Telstra and Optus agree to start censoring over 500 websites that have been blacklisted. Um, According to them, it's only child pornography. But internet experts are saying, um, why? Mm. (laughs) Because if they want it... Remember that whole conversation we're having... Maybe we should have gone back to the the Netflix story and, and saying a VPN, which is a virtual private network, basically enables you to hide your identity and be anywhere in the world. So instead of me doing an IP check and it saying I'm in an ALA exchange, mm. if I went through a VPN, I could be in, you know, Kung Pao Chicken. Yep. <laughs> or somewhere overseas, you know. And I can be anywhere in the world I want. So now suddenly they're going to ban 500 websites from access from within Australia. Mm. Okay. But all I do is I jump on a VPN and I access them from outside Australia. So <laughs> the people who want to access the content... They'll, they'll do it. Um, it's not going to affect them in any way. And what happened last time there was a trial of this software was 500 websites were directly blacklisted, but because they some other websites use certain word structure that they deemed inappropriate, hmm. something 50,000 websites ended up being blocked. And I know of two churches, just their homepage websites yeah. were unable accessed. So, <laughs> yeah, it's not right. You know. But I suppose, yeah. So, can they? Do you reckon that they can these places like the two churches? Will they be able to apply to have themselves unblocked? Only well, if you know it's implemented. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, like, <laughs> the, only, <laughs> but the, yes, you can. You've got to know that you're blocked in the first place. You know. Yeah, but when the father sits down <laughs> to update the. The, the the church's choir 
the him list for the, the weekend, well, you'll go, oh, where's the page? Um, yeah, I guess. Uh, well, maybe not because if they're only uploading it, then who knows? But, you know, the thing is, does every website in Australia, and not only in Australia, in the world, because it's blocking worldwide websites as well, not just Australian websites. Mm. So mm. the website in the world have to do a confirmation to make sure their website's not being blocked by Australia. Mm. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. Uh, it's, it's crazy. All right. Um, what are we going to do next? We got, a, we, we, got a, we got a special guest coming up. Oh, do we just? We have got a special guest. Hang on. <laughs> if, I, if I can push the right buttons here on the, on the, on the, on the tech head uh, <laughs> mixer, we might, we might get something here. Hello. Hello. Hello, Hello. Mark. What are you doing? Hello. Hello. I'm running out the front of Waxies. Can you hear me? We can. We can. I, am I clear? Because I forgot to bring my good headphones. I only brought the, the normal headphones, so I'm using the microphone and the iPhone. No, no, you're right. You're clear. What, what's going on? You're working? Yeah, of course I'm working. It's the only job in the world where you can actually do a podcast while you're working. Oh, nice work. <laughs> is it, is it yeah, busy the tonight? Um, yeah, it's not too bad. We got Mouse and Chris performing. It's a heavy rock night at Waxies. All the rock songs, all the classics, and they're about to start after Thunderclap Newman finishes. Right. Something in the air, which is a uh, great song they should have used for the MacBook Air commercial, but they didn't. But anyway, I did. Um, how are y'all doing, boys? It's been so long. I know it. It's been it's been a while. I don't know how long it is, but it, I think I don't know. When did you leave? About a year ago. I was going to say twelve inches, but I was just boasting. Um, <laughs> Oh, look, yeah, it's been a while. It's been a long time. I've been battling skin cancer and I've been battling a whole lot of other things. But, uh, yeah, now that I've got the uh, iPhone and I know that you guys are on Thursday night, I might actually call in occasionally and annoy Good the stuff. shit out of you. Yeah, you can actually listen to it or you can listen live through audio as well. Cause we've got That's an... what I've been doing for the last 10 minutes. No, but not through the Skype, but through we've got an audio stream as well. Oh, that's just amazing. But Skype is much easier for me because I'm lazy. But I just wanted to throw something in because you were saying earlier about the cameras being switched off at concerts and being filming kids and being accused yep. of being pedophiles and all that kind of thing. Yes. A friend, a friend of mine, funnily enough, was actually out in a park in Southport recently with his son. And his son, they were sitting on a bench and his son made something, said something funny. Mm. And he basically leaned over, gave him a hug and a kiss on the cheek. And there were two elderly ladies sitting across from them. And they basically just, yeah, were disgusting. And they were like, oh. exactly what you were saying. They were accusing him of <laughs> being, you know, whatever. Oh, yeah. So he basically walked up to them and he said, that's only because you've never had children. And yeah. Didn't realise he was cutting a nerve because neither of them had had children, <laughs> and he just walked off with his son. But like, it's just crazy the fact that you know the media have made people so paranoid. Yeah, you know, if you're a sing if you're a father and you're with your kids, they just immediately think you're a uh, predator. Yeah, well, that's right. And as, as we were saying, like these people are going to do these things anyway. At like, so like until they're caught. So just, just you know, you still should be able to film your kid doing a swimming lesson or something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, look, I've done, I've done functions here for like 21st birthday parties and all that kind of thing. And some of the slideshows that go through that I get, actually have to edit to put onto DVD, yeah. there's nude shots of the kids back yeah. in 1991 and 93 and all that kind of stuff when they were kids. Yeah. And I actually feel really bad because I'm thinking to myself, shit, if, if anyone jumped on my computer and saw these you know, things – they would immediately accuse me, and I'm thinking to myself, it's just, it's just gone crazy. Yeah, you know? well, there's, a, there's a couple of nudie kitty photos of me hanging around somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they were taken when you were 23. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and it was cold. Yeah, that's right. So, how 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 cold is it up at Waxies? Um, it's not quite brass monkey cold, right. but um, I guarantee it'll probably get colder as the night progresses. Because last night was freezing, mm. but um, well, you know it's it's it's, it's 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 winter. You know you've got to expect these things. That's right. All I can say is that global warming my ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well we need a bit of that right now. It is cold, and and so tell me when the band's on, what are you doing? Are you just kicking back? Uh, look, I normally start flame wars on Facebook. Um, I kind of like, not much really. But I you have get a meal. You get paid for sitting there. Hey, don't say that loudly. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> hey, look, I have to be there to make sure that the sound volume's okay, that it's not too loud, that the band aren't going too crazy, and right. make sure that the music that I play complements them rather than just going into doof doof music, right. which some yes. other DJs tend to do. Um, okay. So, yeah, no, it's, 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 it's good. I'm, I'm worth every cent, mate. Oh, I'm good. worth every yes. cent. We know, we know. And now a question then on the spot. When is Waxy's coming back? Oh, live the, at Waxy's. Live at Waxy, uh, sorry. Yeah, live at Waxy's. Oh, look, it's, 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 I've got some HD footage in that, but the thing is, is that, oh, my Mac is just, it's, 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 it's what's it, long in the tooth. Right. The iMac that I've got is just starting to really give me the shit. It's that color wheel yep. is my nemesis. But can't you reformat I, it? Can't I what? Ref Buy a new one? No, reformat it. Um, well, the problem with that is, is that it's actually the office computer, so there's a lot of stuff on there that if, like, I'd only reformat it if it, like, really, really had a major drama because, like, mm. there's a lot of sensitive material on it that is connected with passwords and a whole range of stuff. And even though, this is, here we go, this is the reason why. I actually changed from Firefox 4 because it was crashing and it was annoying yep. and it gave me the shit. Yep. And I went Chrome. Right. Because Chrome seems to be great. But as you know, when you go from one browser to another browser, all of your saved passwords go to the dogs. Mm. And I lost pretty much uh, easily over a 1,000 passwords because each of the members of GU have their own passwords. But the main thing was was Big Pond to log in to check your account, the password which I'd saved, yep. no longer worked. Oh, great. So it was just one of those things where I was like, this is, you know, this is nonsense because like with Firefox, you're able to save your passwords. Well, I'll tell you what. So you can actually, yep. I'll tell you what. Go home or, or while you're having paid tea at Waxies, sit down yep. and look up lastpass.com and get into it. All right, I will do that. Because what it does is you store, uh, it stores the, the web address where you are, where the password is. You type the password in, it says you want to save it, and you save it. Uh, and so all this is all saved under like a master password. So you need the master password before the plugin will, will work, will open in your browser. Works, <laughs> it works across Firefox, IE, uh, Chrome, and probably Safari. So nice. It works across a lot of it. And then it doesn't matter where, what computer you go to, you'll have your passwords with you all the time as long as you can remember the master password. Well, I can remember a while back we were doing that survey where we tried to find out how many passwords, you know, listeners mm. had. I think Will, how many did you have, Will? Uh, one. With, well, yeah, that's what, yeah, that's right, yeah, one I'm password. One. And a lot of people do that now. They just have the one password unless they have to add a, uh, like, you know, how you might be, I'm, I'm using the old fax number from the, uh, from the computer shop. <laughs> oh, <geez>. um, <laughs> Still. <laughs> so, so you could, you could hack into my bank account anytime you want. But the, um, oh, the thing is, is that some of, some of the websites require alphanumeric. Yes, that's so right. So in that case, you have to add, you know, letters into the mix. Yep. But um, I was talking to some, a lovely lady the other day. Um, her name was Ravella and she was 70 years old and she was a bit of a computer tech head. And um, she uses the one password as well for everything. And the thing that blew me away was it's only a four-digit number. It's just her account BS, uh, her uh, PIN number. And yeah. I'm like, how the hell did you do that? Because like when I go on to any of these websites, they always say minimum six mm. letters. Yes. But like she showed me, well, she didn't. She actually, she actually gave me the number as well. So I'm gonna just have some fun on her <laughs> Facebook page. But <laughs> yeah, but, but see, the thing. Was, <laughs> yeah, so with this, with the lastpass.com, like you want to do it because it even it even helps you because you don't even have to type the the, the login password in. It auto fills. So all you're doing no. is you, you go straight to the page. It auto fills, auto logs in if you want it to. It's easy. Well, the thing, the, the other thing is because like Chrome, I've been doing that lately with Chrome with the save password, save password, save password as you go along. But the only thing that worries me is that other people can just jump onto the onto my computer. And when they bring up the page that requires the password, my username and password are there. Yeah. And not exactly thrilled with that system. I think that's something that is, you know, like I like the idea where if you type in your pass, uh, your username, it auto completes that and then it'll actually auto complete the uh, password. Mm. But when it just comes up there automatically, any Tom, Dick, or Harry could just, you know, jump into my computer and start, you know, the only ones that don't do it are the banking 
websites, yeah. which God, God, God bless them. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah. yeah crazy stuff, Good. crazy stuff. Good stuff. All right. Well, we're going to move on. You're more than welcome to hang around and listen if you like. And Sweet as. All right. And you... I'll, what I'll do is I'll put myself on mute. Yep. That way it won't interrupt. That's all right. I'll just turn you need, down anyway. If I, jump, if I need to jump in, okay. I'll jump in. All right, well, you do that. I'll leave, your, I'll leave your volume up and you jump in when you want to. All right, sweet as bro. Okay, good stuff. We're going we're gonna to go and have a break anyway now for a couple of minutes. So uh, we'll see you all after the break. Okay, bye-bye. All right. How clear is that? Is that okay? Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah? Oh, God bless the iPhone. Yeah, that's great. It's, it's, clear, it's clear as a phone call. Nice. Mm. Oh, well, that's good then. Yeah. So now we're going to bring in Eric has arrived. Nice. So he, how do we add him in? This is going to be, this, is, this gives me technical phobias every week. <laughs> uh, add to. Technical piles. <laughs> All right. So that's going to stuff right. up. Hello? Hello. Here he is. All right. Everything's. You want to, you want to do a sound check? Yeah. Sure, everything now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's going okay. Say say something again. Hello. Hello, yep. everyone. That's Hello, good. Room. Yep. That's good. That's good. All right. So we'll just wait for your picture. We have got a grey screen. Did you read? Have to read those uh, screen grabs too. Yeah, I'll do that in a sec once he's um. Thing comes oh. through. Coming through now. It's trying. Trying. Did you reformat? Hey, there it is. Oh, yes. look at that view. <laughs> it's elevated. All right, so we'll capture. Hang on, hang on. So what we're going to do, we'll just bring you a bit bigger here. Like that. Hello, 12 viewers in the lounge. And they say hello. So what camera? Oh, yeah, that's better. Okay, so now I'm going to re- I'm going to capture you. Is that picture coming through okay? It's okay. Want me to switch cameras? Well, give us a go. Hang on, I'll switch to one and you tell me which is better. I'm going to recapture Will. <clears throat> that noise is back on the line. That might be... What noise is that? Like a little... It only started once you come on. So it wouldn't be. Talk. It wouldn't be the the hard drive echoing up through the mic, would it? No, I, my I, my computer doesn't make any noise. Let me move the mixer away from the PC, though. See if it does anything. Oh, I know what's. I know what it is. I know what it is. If this is what it is. I know what it what it is. Let me just see. Oh, hang on one second. Rightio, so recapture will. Just right, I just plugged in and plugged out the mixer. Yeah, it's got a buzz. <laughs> the noise has gone away, it's just left a buzz behind. It's, How's that? Yeah, it's soft, it's soft enough. Yeah. But at least it stopped the loop back. All right, so just capturing will. Still there. It's soft. I can't actually hear it at the minute, but it must be soft. And do that. Okay. So we'll get back into it. Why does that do? Why is that doing that? Yeah, you can't hear the air conditioning going, can you? Not um, 
unless it's the aircon blowing over the mic. Let me. No, it shouldn't. It's a directional it mic. Oh, I can hear that hum. I can hear it now. Mm. It's just ooh, 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 like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's not, I just turned the aircon off, so it wasn't that. Now it's gone. Hello, oh. testing. All right. We'll get back indoors. Oh. Is that... What was that? That high-pitched noise just about deafened <laughs> Well, you must be, you must be getting it louder than me because I'm not getting I'm not getting it. I might just have it turned up more than you. <laughs> mm. All right, so real. I'll just get another track here and then we'll be right. Come on, come on. All right, okay. Well, let's go while we're not. Oh. I just want to see I think that was Mark. His mute came off. <laughs> <laughs> Your mute came off, Mark. <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll just turn him down. A, we'll, we'll just turn him down a bit so that doesn't happen again. All right, so so we're we check bad. Duplex. Bad. Can Sorry, we just start I'm just, I'm just saying I might have to sign off because the big boss is coming in tonight for a function. Right. So I can't be walking around with an iPod <laughs> stuck in my face. Right. Um, so, yeah. So, but anyway, hi, Eric. Hi, mate. How are you going? Good, brother. All right. So we'll talk to you soon. Sweet as, but next week there'll be no function, so I'll be able to do it and I'll have the actual good headset, which will make a huge difference. Just text me to remind me. Right. Um, but on that case, the show is in great hands and uh, I'll have a listen to it and see how it sounds. Oh, love you. Yes. Okay, see you later. Ta da. Woohoo. All right, so there he goes. All right, how's that sound now? Okay. Yes. Not so bad. So far, so far, so good. So we're 30. Hey, Sounding like the glass table? Sound okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're 35 in, so we best just sort of come back, introduce Eric, and I don't know, what, how did, however we're going to try and uh, just ease our way into, into the Audible. Uh, oh, you want to do Audible straight up, do you? Yeah, you probably shouldn't leave it too far into the show. We're 35 minutes in. Oh, you're halfway in now, so... I'm just trying to, which ones have I, have I done, have I done, um, have I done, I've, look, there's a couple I've done officially, and I've, cause I've, I've got a list of those, mm. but there's a few I've done as a very informally. Now, is it worthwhile going through those again, the informal ones? Because I've done Master Switch, I've done Bill Clinton, I've done, um, uh, but, 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 but what else? I think. Um, have I done the Fry Chronicles, Stephen Fry? I think. I don't know if we did that officially or not, but I think we did talk about it. We did talk about something like that. Oh, I've done the General Motors one. Done that one. Have I done. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, where is it? Uh, oh, shit, I just had it a minute ago. That Billy, um, what's his name? George W. Bush. Um, Google. I've done what would Google do? I've done that one. I've done uh, social network. Oh, for far out. Where is it? I was going to swear then. I'm trying not to. <laughs> Have I done State of War? No. Sorry. Okay, well, I'll do that. Okay. All right. So we're going to kick, kick it back in. Uh, so we might just do, say, two quick stories. Just to get yep. the, get the flow going, so intro yep. introduce Eric. Two quick stories, and then uh, and then uh, we'll we'll get some sort of some sort of. Do you want to ask what I've been up to, or is that too late in the piece to do that? Yeah, no, we'll do that. We'll do that. Okay. We can do it's that. Up to you. Your call. Yeah, no, we got to we got to give you the give you the work you win. <laughs> All right. Oh, here, here we go. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> um. 
Yo, when way back, back, back from Waxies, here we go. We're back into the show, and it was good, for, good to hear Mark after all this time. Haven't heard from him from twelve months for oh, around about twelve months, so that was great. Good stuff, Mark. He, hopefully, he might call in again sometime soon. Now, Eric, he's come, he's come alive. He, he's he's found his way home out of the cold. How are you doing, Eric? Hi guys, how are you going? Good. It is cold. It's very cold. It is cold. I, I know. Will was saying it was point one at his joint, and I think it's been about four here in the mornings. Well, don't don't hang around the, inside the fridge too much, Will, and it'll get a lot warmer. <laughs> hey. I'm actually I'm saving power because we're just leaving the freezer <laughs> open and just putting it outside overnight. <laughs> well, see, the thing is, if it's if it's warmer in the freezer than in your house, keep the freezer open, and that way you'll be warmed up. That's right, and which reminds me of a joke. How do you know if an elephant's been in your fridge? No idea. There's, no, there's, there's footprints in the custard. Really? That, that's the best you've got? You've got kids. <laughs> what about, you've got this book, haven't you, Glenn, for your kitties? There's a hippopotamus eating cake on my roof. Yes, everybody. <laughs> I don't think so. Hey? I don't know, I haven't got that. Get that book, The Young Filler. They love it. Yeah, right. Okay. I haven't heard that. How come you've heard that one, Will? It's, a fan, it's, it's older than you. It's a brilliant that's book. The, that's the only book he reads. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, well, I've got past the first page. All right. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so what, what have you been up to, Eric, this week? Anything exciting? Oh, it's a bit of a busy week. I don't know if it's exciting, but um, mother-in-law's decided to have a stroke up in Queensland. She was at Longreach when it happened. Oh, geez. So Royal Flying Doctor had to come and fly her into Brisbane. Wow. And Is that where she lives, that in Longreach? No, no. They were travelling around Australia, you know, doing the whole grey nomad in the caravan thing. Oh, right, right. Oh, gee, that's and, no good. Uh, so she wasn't ill or anything. She was fighting fit, so, to, you know, as much as possible. Not super fit, but she wasn't, you know, she's skinny. Mm. You'd think the last person it happened to would be her, put it that way. Yeah, right, uh, right. So how's she going so she's, now? Right. She's, you know, but there's confusion. She's going to need speech therapy. Oh, jeez. Obviously, a lot of stroke victims do. Yeah, right. Um, she's just got to watch what she does, you know. There's some, um, mm. you know, they've got to really yeah. do some tests with her and have a look at her cholesterol and she's going to have to watch her diet. Because, you know, sometimes you can be skinny and have high cholesterol. Mm. Yeah, Jesus. You can be overweight and have low cholesterol. So sometimes there's no mm. correlation, coll- correlation between weight and heart attack. Yeah, right. Uh, really, there is, but I'm not saying go and get a Big Mac, fellas. But, um, no. yeah, so she's up at uh, – so the wife went up there today because she couldn't um, get a flight. You're right. Uh, oh, the ash. So she was supposed to go up yesterday. The flight got cancelled. So she went up today, so all the, all went well. She's staying up near your way at uh, Bigara Waters, mate. Yeah, Bigara. Bigger, actually, bigger of waters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All you, all you Mexicans say bigara. <laughs> oh, what do you want me to say, bigger? What's it stand for anyway? <laughs> nothing. I don't know. Nothing. It's probably some Aboriginal name for something. Yeah. Ab- Aboriginal for this Aborig- is our land. Probably get off. Aboriginal for you paid way too much for that. <laughs> yeah, it's only about twenty minutes, and actually, that's uh, bigger. That's up where Mark lives. Up there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there you he, go. he actually lives up that way. All right. So uh, well, let's move on into some stories. Uh, we've got here, I've got a couple of quick little ones here. Uh, there's, a, there's a nice little one here. Japanese gadget charges mobile phone over campfire. So the... the did, did you hear about that? Yeah, I thought about that. I, don't, I didn't read too much into it. I don't know if it, it probably works. Yeah, so what, what they're doing is they're sticking two little electrode things into a pot of boiling water over a campfire, like boiling the billy, sticking these things into the, into the water. Uh, so th- it's called a Hatsudan Nabi thermoelectric cook pot. Turns heat from boiling water into electricity that feeds via a USP, USB port into digital devices any, such as smartphones, music players and global positioning systems. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's going to sell for, oh, geez, $284. And plans to... You know, the, uh, the Peltiers how we're talking about on... Did you talk that? Okay. Hang on. Sorry, Eric. So how often would you go camping that you'd use that anyway? Well, I think, well, not, I wouldn't. But, um, but what I think that what they're saying is what the story was alluding to as well is once it comes down to a bit cheaper, they're going to try and use it for third world countries so they can oh, charge good. Yeah, out in the yeah. desert and stuff. Can't afford their own housing, but they're going to throw that in a campfire and charge up their iPhones. Yeah, that's right. I heard um, that. J- yeah, sorry, Will. I was going to say, basically, you know how on Talkback Tech we're talking about um, thermoconductors and, and Peltiers, oh, how you yeah. use them for yep. CPU, things like that. Well, this is a classic example of what one is. 
Okay, you can apply heat to it, creates heat, or you can apply power to it, and creates heat on one side, creates cool on the other side. But if you have a, te- a temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side, it creates electricity. So what they've basically done is they've turned the bottom of the, the pan into a giant peltier, and so the fire burns at three or 400 degrees, but the water only boils at 100. So there's a 300 degree temperature difference, and mm. that creates the electricity. So it's actually a very basic system. Yeah, right. So well, as long as it works, that, that sounds good, doesn't it? That sounds good. Yeah, virtually. It can't fail. It, it pretty much, it, you know, it's... And, I mean, you can cook your breakfast in it while you're doing it. But basically, you know, it's it's a foolproof system. It's basically indestructible. Mm. You can use it where, you know, so. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good. And also, so, and 20 years. Happy birthday, Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't know if you guys remember that. Who's Sonic the Hedgehog? <laughs> that's a video game. <laughs> Little character at a video game. Sega's spiky blue mascot. Yeah. But, uh, he's celebrating his 20th birthday. So, yeah. Whoopie doo. Thanks for coming, Sonic. <laughs> Sonic, now get out. <laughs> Don't kick him because he'll, he'll hurt. He'll stick spikes in the arm. <laughs> Wasn't it 25 years since the Nintendo entertainment system, I think? Yeah, okay. Yeah, I think that was just the other week, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, something like that. But uh, anyway, Eric, uh, what's, what have you been listening to this week? Uh, you were telling us before, you were telling I me before been- you've been listening to some, a great book this week. I have been listening to this book off and on for a while because um, it's very, uh, it's not a long book, six hours, four and four minutes, um, but it's, um, it's quite deep. So you've got to sort of stop it every now and again and think about what they've just said to understand what they've just said mm. uh, because it's very complex and complicated. There's a lot of stories intertwined, etc., etc. So basically it's called State of War, The Secret History of the CIA and the Bush Administration. And if you like conspiracy theories, this is um, this is as close as you're going to get to conspiracy slash fact. Um, publisher's summary. I'll just read a little grab of that, then I'll play a little grab. With relentless, relentless media coverage, breathtaking events, and extraordinary congressional and independent investigations, it is hard to believe that we still might not know some of the most significant facts about the presidency of George W. Bush. Yet beneath the surface of the events of the Bush presidency lies a secret history a series of hidden events that makes a mockery of current debate, including domestic spying, abuses of power, outrageous operations, CIA that became caught in political crossfire, etc. Very interesting book. Um, I'm about probably two-thirds of the way through it. And um, George Bush has come out with an actual book, an uh, autobiography, and trying to disclaim a lot of the things that people have been writing about him and I'm sort of reading that at the moment. I'm just waiting for the audio book of that to come out and I might grab that too. So mm. here's a grab. Um, just hope it's not too uh, loud for you. This is Audible. Simon & Schuster Audio presents State of War, The Secret History of the CIA and the Bush Administration by James Risen. Read by Boyd Gaines. A note on sources. Many people led by President Bush. In 2005, Hayden was named Deputy Director of National Intelligence, making him the top lieutenant to John Negroponte the director of national intelligence, the top intelligence post created by the post 9-11 intelligence reforms. During his Senate confirmation hearings for his new position, Hayden was never asked publicly about the NSA's covert domestic intelligence program. As you can see, it just strings on. It's very hard to get a, mm. a, a feeling of what that book's about because it's very intertwined. Um, so it's hard to get a decent grab out of it but it sort of sums up, oh yeah, yeah, I'd like to really read that because it's the whole thing, once you start listening to it, it's sort of one of those things you can't sit, you can't sort of put it away. Yeah, so um, they do get you in, don't they? Like, it just, I don't know, mate, the, obviously they get really good actors to read the book and everything. And it's just a relaxing, it, it's almost just inviting sort of tone of the voice and everything. Yeah, yeah, if they get a good voice, um, you know, Stephen Fry's a, a great reader. Um, you know, Bill Clinton is fantastic in his book. Mm. And, and this is pretty good too, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. 
State of War, The Secret History of the CIA and the Bush Administration, uh, audible.com. Now, if you want to try a book from audible.com, just go to the, the aussietechheads.com.au homepage and you'll see a banner on the front. If you click that banner it will and, and sign up, uh, you'll get a free book. For, uh, what is it? 14, 14 days 14. or something? Oh. Sorry? 14 day trial. Yeah, 14 day trial. You get the free book and you get to keep it. Okay, so sign up on the on the page. Have a listen. Have a go. If you don't like what you hear, you can always bow out. But have a go. I, I would I would recommend having a go. We've, get the book whether you continue with the subscription or not. That's right. And you might as well. It's a free book. So why not have a go? Uh, so that's the banner on the front of the AussieTechHeads.com.au webpage. If you go through that, you help support the podcast as and and we're everyone's happy. Uh, we've also just quickly there's a there's a audible audible recommendation from the chat room from the lounge. We've got Disgruntled Tech. He's listening to Game of Thrones. So we might have to have a look at that and see what that one's all about. And he's also read the, the, the one that you've just been talking about, Eric. He's, he's halfway through that one too. Excellent, excellent. Mm. What do you think, Disgruntled? Pretty good? Yeah, well, he's halfway through. He wants to listen to the rest of it. So, yeah, so good stuff, good stuff. All right, moving on, moving on. What else? You got any stories, Eric? We might as well get some out of you before, before, we, get, look, before we finish. Now, I haven't been listening, so you, you might have already covered a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Um, have you covered the Telstra signing off on the deal? No, I silly. I was actually going to – I was. I did save those ones till you came on. So oh, did you? Re- <laughs> <laughs> I know you like Telstra. But I, wa- I don't want to cover that. I want to cover okay. something that no one else has tend to pay much attention. Go, Optus yeah. has also signed a deal with the NBN for $800 million. Yeah, I, I read that, but I don't know what the deal was. What was the deal? Well, the deal it says they've reached an, an agreement, $800 million agreement with the federal government to migrate its customers to the NBN. Australia's second biggest telco said it would progressively migrate its uh, HFC, the fiber, hybrid fiber coaxial cable customers, to the NBN from 2014. Gee, that's a while, that's a while away, isn't it? Yeah. 2014, it's, two, oh, it's, it's three run. years. Two and a half years, yeah. Yeah. This will only affect customers using Optus's fixed line services and not mobile infrastructure. Hmm. The value of the agreement is eight hundred million on a well, I'm not gonna worry about that net present value. Not, that's too too much blah blah blah. Um, the, this deal supports the MBN to create a level playing field for all telcos. So a lot of guys are just jumping in on this because they want to compete. And that's fair enough too. Um, you know, so when they're all all in there, people can decide whether or not when they, they wanna sign up with their NBN to via to Telstra's NBN service or to yes. Optus's NBN service or IONET's NBN service. Hmm. So, you know, that's not a bad thing because if you don't just want Telstra in there because no, it'll be right. a monopoly. So, and the other part of the story that um, that's, that's been everywhere, obviously, and just, if you haven't heard about it, well, I'll just cover it quickly, that Telstra has signed off an 11, on the $11 billion deal to transfer its fixed-line monopoly to the NBN as its copper network is gradually shut down. Now, Prime Minister Gillard said the deal would allow the NBN to be rolled out faster with higher revenues and less overhead cabling. Final approval of the deal won't happen until October 18, when 1.4 million shareholders will cast their vote. On the the thing, Uh, where are we here? The telco said this value will not be in the form of an upfront payment, but it it is a present value of payments to be received over many years. Telstra will earn revenues through disconnection payments as the rollout of the NBN occurs and its customers transfer to the new fibre optic network. This is all starting to get all complicated, isn't it? It also also, uh, gains revenues through leasing payments for the use of Telstra's infrastructure over a period of 35 to 40 years. And the telco will also benefit to the tune of about an extra $2 billion in savings delivered as the government relieves the telco from its universal service obligation. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, look, a lot of people argue both sides of that one. Let's not get into it. Mm. So if you want to know more about the universal service obligation, you, I've put a link in the show notes. If you don't know what it is, it's just, a bit, it's just a bit of paper to say basically that at the moment Telstra has an obligation to give – what anyone in Australia a phone to provide the yeah, service they supply if they can yeah the phone that's without, right without discrimination yes yep all right uh, yeah will sorry you were you were saying something there before did you have anything to add to that story um, no it's okay it's it's gone now oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> all right uh, what else have I got here in the little in the little one I can backs new domain suffixes 
So that for about a two or three month period, it looks like in January 2012, I think, a uh, three month period, they're going to open up the doors and ask for submissions for top level domains. Like so, instead of the tot dot com, uh, you'll be able to register register dot whatever. So um, apparently, interest has been been sought. What, or, what, what sort of suffix would you put on there? I mean, well, like, so interest already has been has come from from dot Melbourne dot Sydney. Oh, okay, um, so, so you could put something like um, um, Julia Gillard dot moron. That's right. You could do that if you wanted to. Uh, yeah, someone could, you could make up a, a, t- a top level domain. Uh, yeah, moron dot moron, and then go. Uh, you know, it, would, it would cost a lot though. It would cost a lot. Do you know how much will? But I, I know it would. I the, I didn't read anything in this article, but in the last slot I was reading a month or so ago, they're talking you know thirty forty thousand dollars for a top level. Hmm. Jeez. You know, it'll be for the corporation, so Apple could have one. You know, iTunes dot Apple. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's per that's year, you know. Yeah, and then you mm. also on top of that, you're talking an actual setup cost as well. So, yeah, right. And uh, another, have you got any stories, Will? Anytime soon. <laughs> well, is that sorry, Harry? <laughs> that I won't be getting one of those. No, <laughs> I don't think so. I think we'll be be keeping that at bay. Little dot com will do me for a while too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Will, did you have any stories? Well, you know how we were talking earlier about um, companies basically not keeping up with the time, so they're trying to, you know, they basically just make stuff up mm. <laughs> because it's it's not practical for them to live in the real world anymore. Um, well, this is a good one from airports. Basically, new studies have shown that about 73, 74% of their customers um, use online or mobile devices to book their tickets. Um, now, according to the, the powers that be in the marketing um, side of things, there's not enough people using the services to warrant um, develop them, developing them properly for, you know, for the service, basically for internet or mobile devices. Um, <laughs> so basically they're saying about... Five billion people a year use some sort of electronic service. Um, I but according that's... to the airlines, yeah, that's that's not enough to warrant, you know, making them marketing them and making them work properly. They they just want to charge more for parking. That's all they're interested in. <laughs> well, that, well, that doesn't. Yeah, I mean, you know, like but they want people to stand in a line and wait to buy a ticket. Um, mm. Well, you can do. Of, you can do express checkout these days, or express. I tell you what, if you're flying internationally, you don't want to be letting anybody just um, self check in. No, no, probably not. It's, it's not that. It's, it's, it's in 2001 with that. It's not just that. It's the fact that because instead of you know bothering to spend a couple million dollars to develop correct online systems. Um, to make it easier, to make them work correctly, to make the – because with um, – t- I think it's Tiger. It might be Virgin, but one of the two. You actually book your ticket online and then when you get to the terminal, you have to actually stand in line to collect it because it, you can't print out the ticket from online and show them to Tiger. them. That's Tiger. Virgin allows you to print them. Yeah, that's Tiger. So, uh, you've actually purchased the ticket online. You've still got to wait in the queue to get your ticket. That's, that's pretty <laughs> pathetic. If you can print it out at home – you yeah. should be able to uh, just hand it over. But look, I was listening to the radio this morning and they were saying, oh, $30 to Sydney, Tiger. And I'm thinking... Plus I don't know. taxes. Yeah. Plus, tax, yeah. plus, the, plus fuel levy, plus... <laughs> they, did, they did say conditions apply. But I mean, but even though, like, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if I actually would actually trust in Tiger. <laughs> it, just, it just doesn't sit with me at the moment. Who owns Tiger? Is it Singapore Airlines? Is that them? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, I, I, that up. but I know Quant- Qantas... Can someone Google that? Yeah, Qantas... Please? Who has? Qantas apparently slipped to eighth position in the world's most liked airlines. There's a little no as a side note. No surprises there. Uh, Aussie online stores made a lot of cash last year. Good. Online stores, $143 billion. Worth of goods in the nine ten financial year sold online. We 
fight tomorrow for Jerry Harvey's comment. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> it's not fair. Tax them. Yeah. And, a, and, a, and another smelly story. Barack Obama is to get more personal with tweeters. Barack Obama has 8.69 million followers on Twitter, making him the third most followed account. And uh, after, after Lady Gaga and, oh, heaven forbid, Justin Bieber. Oh, my God. <laughs> is that a joke? Anyway. He's, do you know what uh, Barack Obama follows me on Twitter? You were telling me that the other week. Yes, He's yes. He's followed something like 500,000 people. Mm, yes. Which is a lot um, out of his 8 million followers. And one of them happens to be me. In the early days, as soon as you signed up for his account, you got auto-followed, but they stopped that pretty quick. <laughs> I, wonder, I wonder if he follows Rex Owner because oh. Barack, <laughs> Barack Obama, he, he, when, he, when he tweets, he ends the tweet with B.O. B.O., yeah, that's right. Yeah, his, campaign's, his, his campaign has said, his staff hey, there has said. There was a picture at our school called, I won't mention her last name because she still might be with us, Miss, Miss something we'd call her. And we used to call her Boch, B.O. Because right. she, had, she had hairy armpits and she smelt. I think oh. she was a bit of a hippie. Oh. So we just walked past her and go, Boch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've got to, got, to, got to love the hairy armpit smell. It's great. Speaking of, it's not the story I had lined up. I had another story lined up. But um, there's re-releasing the smell of vision um, They figured out a way to synthetically... To, ca- to carry enough synthetic product in, in a TV set mm. that can make something like 80% of the common things we smell. They can synthetically engineer these and put them in a the thing. So they reckon they're good. Right. Every month you get your fill of, of smelly stuff. But <laughs> you've, got, you've got chemicals in your TV. Well, that'll be good for your environment mm. at home. I suppose it's pornos not... will jump on that one as well. <laughs> oh, I don't want to smell that. <laughs> Where's it, Master Chef? <laughs> oh, that, that'd be a good one. That'd be a good one. But oh yeah, gee, smell o vision. Gee, there'd be some. Yeah. <coughs> I also heard, also heard. Who's Will, it? sorry, <laughs> what's, he, what's his picture on there? <laughs> well, that has to do with my my next story. Um, okay, go. About be sensitive. Peek oh. peekaboo. Oh, oh, be sensitive. I know what you're going to say. Be sensitive. Basically, there's a a um a call out from um, police stations and things like that for Muslim women who file complaints with police while wearing the full face veils, um, they may be fingerprinted to one, to confirm their identity um, and secondly to confirm that it was them that actually put the complaint through. Um, I'd just go so, one step take a blood test to work out whether it's a male or a female behind the burqa. <laughs> but um, yeah, so basically that's what that's, what that's about. Um, if, you, if they can't make out your identity then basically yeah, um, be ex- expected to be fingerprinted because you know, they're saying, well, okay, fine. You mm. want your privacy or, or whatever. That's that's no big deal. But in order for you to file a complaint, we, we to know have to know that... That's fair enough. Uh, ...you're who you are. Mm. You know, like, it's no use them showing your driver's license because, <laughs> you know... Well, that'd be covered that. up. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they'll, they'll deal with it. They'll deal with it. Uh, what else? I think we're, just, we're nearly at the end of the show. What else we got going? Oh. Oh, Anything exciting? There's oh, I one got, got uh, uh, my bedroom's cabled during the week. Is that an interesting story? Yeah, how did that go? Cat 6, all done. Any dif- noticeable difference in anything? Well, well, the, we'll put it this way. The kids are getting 20 megabits down in their bedroom now. And, and it's, the bedroom's a mile away from where the bloody router is. And what were they before? Oh, about three or four. Are you serious? Yeah, because they didn't have cables. I, I, I was just um, using a relay, a wireless relay. Oh, to get okay. Them in. Oh, right. I thought you had like I thought you were going from Cat Five to Cat Six. No, no, it had nothing in there. Right, right. So they'd be happy well, with that. So the whole house is cabled now in every room except the um, the um, first dining room and lounge room. What about the toilet? No, nah, not toilet. Get wireless <laughs> from the toilet. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah, look, uh, we've I've got a few network points around here. I've got one in the lounge room, of course, for the media center. Uh, yep. I've got one in uh, Kim's office. She's got a little yep. computer in there. Got one out in the kids' lounge room because yep. media center out there. Rest of the place and go wireless. 
Yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so I've, got, I've got running. the family room because we've got the Apple TV. Yeah. And uh, the rumpus room's got the Apple TV as well. So that's that's all wired up. Mm. And bed, the bedrooms, that's it. Yep. Yeah. And you're, you're a wireless fan, Will? Was that what you were saying? No, I've got a 24 port switch hub that's full, two five port routers that are full. Oh, jeez. Uh, and uh, six hey, running port main yeah. motor that's full. <laughs> Bloody hell, what the hell are you running a bank or something? <laughs> no, you're trying to hack into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you need an access point. <laughs> no, he, <laughs> he's just he's just got modems linked to routers with like just with um pin to pin wiring. You're just like blinking lights, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I turn the I turn the lights off of a night and I can still see where I'm right. going. <laughs> They're mesmerizing. He's got the ca- he's got the cables just ra- wrapping around his house. He's trying to turn the house into a big magnet. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually um it's i mean most of the the stuff is hardwired because it's quicker than wireless that's all you know mm. i get wireless all through the house but that's mainly for phones and stuff and everything else wherever there's a system sitting that's hardwired mm. Mm. <laughs> that's funny all right well i think we're at the end of the show i think um i've yeah. just got one yeah. quick story just before we go because it is coming up to tax time and people are going to be you know, um, starting to fill out a tax return soon. Um, there's a warning out by the ATO about a number of refund scams circulating at the moment. Um, they look very official. If you look on the um, the stream I'm putting up now, you can actually see documents. They've got a proper letter headed. They're, there's everything about them. They look real. Um, but basically, they take you to a fake site and obviously they get your, your account details and, and give you the royal shaft. Mm. But, um, yeah, well, they're saying, you know, the ATO says we will never send you out an email asking for your details, you know. But just, just be wary of that, that there's are a lot of... A lot of and that goes to banks. Going You've got to be aware. Around these time, there's a lot of the banks, you get a lot of crap mm. as well. And also, actually, while you're talking about scams, I might as well throw it in, is because uh, I don't know the full details, but you can go to Scam Watch. Just Google Scam Watch. There's one that was came to light today, and it was probably quite interesting. And quite and when you hear it, you'll go, hmm, what a good idea. <laughs> but apparently these thieves... I mean, no, was it a Nigerian prince? <laughs> no, no, well, these, these thieves, or well, you could call them thieves, the crooks, they've been targeting superannuation funds. They've been getting, mm. they've been uh, soliciting information and so forth, and siphoning out super. Now, apparently, the reason why it's such a, a sneaky idea is who goes and checks the balance of their super? Not many people. So they could siphon. You could have, you know, a few thousand siphoned out, and you're probably not going to know. You're not going to know until you turn 65. You know. Mm. So that was that was quite that was quite good. If you're interested in that story, it's uh, sca- just Google Scam Watch, and it's an Australian site, government site, and just have and click on that. It only came out today. Uh, I got it through email. I subscribed to it, so it comes through via email. So yeah, uh, check that one out if you're interested in scams. Um, what else we got? That's it. Will? Yeah, that'll do. Is you can go to uh, AussieTechHeads.com and check out the um, the show notes there and .au as well. After that, uh, yeah. Sorry, yeah, you, you might want to throw that in there. Yeah, I think you can get both ways. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. like it both ways, Glenn? <laughs> oh, I'll give it both both ways. <laughs> You can go .com or .com.au, whatever you want, whichever, whatever you want to do, whatever takes your fancy. Um, all right. Yeah, uh, the .com just reroutes you to the secret hub shop. Oh, doesn't exist. Oh, geez, I'll, well, I'll have to fix that. Hang on. I'm going to put that on my list. Jeez, domain name, domain the names. So you don't know about these things until you come across them after a, a year. Domain name reroute. Okay, I'll fix that. So it'll work. All right, good stuff. All right, uh, it was good to hear from Mark tonight. It was good to hear from Eric and good to hear from Will. So, boys, we'll see you next week, hopefully. Same bat time, same bat channel. Live, drsecrethub.com. See you, Will. See you, Eric. See you, guys. And see you, Lounge. See you, listeners. Goodbye. Bye. Hang on.